Thank God. I'm in the book of, we'd like to look this morning in the book of Nehemiah. If you turn with us to the book of Nehemiah this morning. Thank God. The Lord has certainly been good to us. We missed being here Wednesday night. We was in a place called Danville, Virginia. And I preached in a count meeting on Thursday morning. Had wonderful service Thursday, Wednesday night and Thursday morning. And we thank God uh, for going with us. Brother Charles Bell went with us. And uh, we had a good time there. And uh, Lord willing, this Tuesday night, this Tuesday night coming up, uh, East Side Church of God in Fayetteville, North Carolina. That's where my soon-to-be son-in-law is preaching on every Sunday morning. They're starting a revival. Uh, it'll be, I guess, starting tonight, going through Wednesday night. And my night will be Tuesday night. And so we invite you to come. I know Brother Barton would be glad to have you to come be with them in their service services this week in their revival. And uh, the church, he's working with them. Uh, they are not the, the standard that we have as far as holiness, but they're, God's touching them. There's people being saved in that church and people that are getting closer to God. And we thank God. For that, so he felt like having a few nights of revival there. I think Brother Chuck Barton's going to preach, Brother Perry Deal, and myself, and so we'll be there Tuesday night at seven seven thirty. And so we want to invite you to come and be with us during that time. Nehemiah, if you'd like to read with me this morning, we'd like to begin in the book of Nehemiah, chapter one, and if you'd like to look with us. Chapter 1 of Nehemiah, verse number 2, And Hananiah, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity concerning Jerusalem. They said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the provident, uh, province are in great affliction and reproach the wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire and it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven and said I beseech thee O God of heaven the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe, observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel thy servants and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee, the the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though thou, uh, though uh, there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, Yet I will gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now these are thy servants, thy people, whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. 
O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name and prosper, I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. Ask God's blessings on the reading of his word this morning. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you today for each one, God, that's here this morning. And I believe, Father, that you will speak to us from thy word. God, today, help us, Lord, to receive the word of God. morning in a special way open our hearts and open our minds that we may receive the word of the lord and father we love you and we praise you and give you honor in jesus name and the church said amen the very last verse of this chapter we find that nehemiah is saying his position with the king at this specific time the Bible says he says he was the king's cupbearer. In chapter number one, we find here that Nehemiah has heard about Jerusalem, his home, and he has heard that the walls of Jerusalem have been torn down and the city has been burned with fire. And we understand that Nehemiah, then as he hears these words, we find in this chapter that Nehemiah begins to pray. I believe he was praying with a heavy heart. I believe he was praying earnestly before the Lord. And I believe he saw uh, the hurting of his people, the suffering of his people, and I believe that Nehemiah become under a great burden for his home and for his people. Praise God. Thank you, sis. Amen. Nehemiah, I believe as he heard these words and saw the great need uh, there in Jerusalem, I believe as he was praying to God, in his mind, Nehemiah probably was thinking, Oh, God, I want to see something happen. I want to see help come to my home. I want to see help come to my people. But what can I do? Amen. Seeing that Nehemiah was far away from his homeland. He did not live close by. Nehemiah, amen, probably asked the question, what can I do? The walls have been torn down. The city is burned. I do not have the supplies that are needed to see that this wall is rebuilt and the city is restored. What can I do? Amen. Nehemiah no doubt knew that his time, amen, was very important to the king and that he did not have any available spare time to take off and to go to see about the needs of this city of Jerusalem. Amen. All of these things Nehemiah probably pondered in his mind there's going to have to be skilled uh, men that is going to know how to get this job accomplished. Nehemiah was one man, and in his mind, he probably thought, I don't have the skills needed to be able to rebuild these walls and restore this city. All of these things, praise God, was probably on his heart and his mind. But nevertheless, we see Nehemiah. Praise God. Nehemiah did not just sit back and do nothing. Praise God. Nehemiah done the most important thing that anybody can do when it seems like things is out of your hands and you don't know how to fix it. Nehemiah prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. He began to pray and he began to seek the face of God with fasting and prayer. Amen. And God, if nobody else understood his burden... God heard his prayer, and God understood the burden that Nehemiah was having in his heart. Praise God. We find, amen, thank God that Nehemiah, as he began to pray, 
and seek the face of God. Amen. He asked God, God, I know I'm one man. God, I know in, in myself I'm not sufficient to get this task accomplished. But Nehemiah, amen, prayed and asked God, God, let me be allowed to be a part of the solution of this problem. I want to be a part, amen, to see that this, amen, problem is fixed and that, amen, the city is restored. Praise God. And I want to come to us today, amen, with this thought this morning. Nehemiah used what he had for the Lord. Praise God. Now, I want to preach on that thought just for a moment here this morning. Use what you have and watch God provide that that you don't have. Amen. Use what you have. It is important for us to understand this morning. Thank God that Nehemiah used what he had. God began to work in Nehemiah's life. Amen. Nehemiah, amen, was in the king's house. And uh, God began to hear Nehemiah's prayer. And God began to make connections for Nehemiah. Thank God. God started putting a plan together and a plan in order. Thank God. And I believe, amen, today that God wants to take what you have Thank God, and he wants to see, amen, and watch God take that thing that you have and make what's needed in your life. In Nehemiah chapter number 2, I want to just read a ways, and I need for you to bear with me just this morning for a little while. Amen, we find, amen, where Nehemiah is in the presence of the king. Chapter number 2 and verse number 2 said, as he is in the presence of the king, the king observes Nehemiah and asks a question, says, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then he said, I was very sore afraid. And he said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad? When the city, the place of my father's, the sepulchers lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire. Praise God. Oh, amen. That's just a few words that he has spoken unto the king. But he says to the king, Why should not my countenance be sad? The city, the place of my fathers, the place that I was raised, amen, where my heart is, where I was brought up, amen, said that place, amen, lieth waste. Amen. The gates thereof are consumed with fire. And when the king heard these words and saw the countenance of Nehemiah, Amen. The king said unto him, What doest thou make as request? Amen. What request do you have, Nehemiah? And he said, So I prayed to the God of heaven. Hallelujah. I prayed to the God of heaven. Thank God. What is my answer going to be to the king? The king has said unto him, Amen, for what doest thou make your request? Amen. And he said, If it please the king, and if thy servant had found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchers, Amen, that I may build it. And the king said unto him, The queen also sitting by him, not only just the king, but also the queen sitting there in his presence. Amen. Said, how long shall thy journey be? Praise God. How long shall thy journey be? And will, when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king. Amen. To send me. And I set him a time. Moreover, I said unto the king, if it please the king, let letters be given unto the governors beyond the river that they may convey me over till I come into Judah. And a letter unto Aspa, amen, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace which, which appertaineth to the house and for the wall of the city, 
and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. Hallelujah. Then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. My, amen. We are now beginning to see God as his hand is upon Nehemiah's life. Amen. God, amen, has placed him in the king's palace. Thank God it was no coincidence that he was there. Amen. This is God's people. Amen. Israel. Amen. Jerusalem. The cities. Amen. Was laying in waste. Who is going to come with a burden to see that this city. Amen. Is revealed. I believe God had Nehemiah in the king's palace. Amen. For the time that was needed right here. Amen. In Judah. In Jerusalem. Praise God. And Nehemiah felt the burden. Amen. And he began to. Amen. Talk to the king and the king, thank God, begin to show favor unto Nehemiah. Nehemiah is now making his way down, amen, to Jerusalem. And Nehemiah, I want you to understand, is not going on his journey by himself. Amen. But the God of heaven has heard Nehemiah's cry. And God has shown him favor with the king. And as Nehemiah's making his way down to Ju Judah, amen, into Jerusalem, the Bible said the king sent captains of the army and horsemen with him. Nehemiah's not going by himself. Amen. But the captains of the armies, uh, amen, is accompanying this man of God as he is going forward, amen, to accomplish, uh, amen, the will of God. Thank God. I want to tell you this morning, Nehemiah used what he had. Amen. He had a God in heaven. Thank God that he could pray to. Glory to God. Amen. Nehemiah didn't have a lot. Amen, of skills to know how to build. Nehemiah didn't have an army of his own. Amen, Nehemiah, thank God, didn't know. Amen, all about how God was going to fix it. But he used what he had. What did he have? He had a burden. And he had prayer. Then he went before God. And God heard his prayer. I tell you, I was listening to a song some time ago. Amen, thank God when you don't know what else to do and you can't do nothing else, you can pray, thank God. Aren't you glad for the power of prayer? Amen, when you've got a God in heaven that you've been living for, a God that you've been serving, thank God, walking before the Lord, amen, in righteousness and holiness. Might not have a whole lot of skill, but I've got a God that can hear my cry. And when I begin to call out to him, he can take those things that I don't have and God begins to move and put it in order. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. Nehemiah is going forward. Thank God. Hallelujah. To do the will of God. And as he is going, he's going with an army and horsemen with him. Oh, he didn't go into this place without facing an enemy. Thank God the devil don't want you to go forward in the will of God. He don't want the will of God accomplished. I mentioned just, just this morning, Brother Bell mentioned about how we've been under a battle. He's been under great stress. Praise God, the devil don't want to see the church move forward. He would love to try to get us all down. Amen, to where we are discouraged and not moving forward with God. If nobody else has ever faced this, I want to tell you, you live long enough for God. Amen, you're going to face an enemy. Thank God. I cannot preach to you this morning that it's all a bed of roses and it's all downhill. Amen, there's going to be some uphills. Amen, you're going to have to climb if you're going to serve God. There's going to be some devils that you're going to have to fight. Amen, if you're going to serve God. Amen, you're not going to get there just on a flower bed of ease. And the Bible said as he has come in with this army. Amen, when Samballat the Hornite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite. Thank God the Bible said they heard of it. Thank God they were, amen, enemies of God. They were enemies of Jerusalem. 
Amen. The Bible said they heard about Nehemiah and it grieved them exceedingly that they, amen, that there was a come, there come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. My Lord, my Lord. Amen. What was Nehemiah coming for? Glory to God. The Bible said he was seeking the welfare of the children of Israel. Thank God. Hallelujah. That's a message right there within itself. Amen. And these devils, these enemies, they heard about, amen, Nehemiah coming. And the Bible said it grieved them. They didn't like it, amen, that somebody had caught a burden. Somebody wanted to see the welfare of the children of God. It grieved them, my Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So it came. Amen. Nehemiah said, so I came to Jerusalem and was there for three days. He said, I rose up in the night, not by myself, but I and some few men with me. Neither told I any man what God, my God, had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Listen now. Amen. That's more than I can really comprehend right there. He said, I had not told God I had not told any man what God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Amen. But there's somehow another Sambalat and Tobiah got word about it. Somehow another the devil knew about it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you what. I don't mean to give the devil no credit this morning. Amen. But let me tell you, you're going to do something for God. Amen. The devil is a sly old fox. Come on. Praise God. He'll get right in the middle of what you're trying to do for God if he can and try to spoil your plans. Hallelujah. Amen. But Nehemiah said God had put it in his heart to go to Jerusalem. Amen. He said there was neither any beast with me save the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley even before the dragon wall and, the, and, to, and to the dung port. And listen now what he said he saw. He said he viewed the walls of Jerusalem and which were broken down and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Praise God. He said, then I went on to the gate of the fountain, to the king's pool. But there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. He said, then I went up in the night by the brook and I viewed the wall. He said, I turned back and entered in by the gate of the valley. He said, so I returned. And the rulers knew not whether I went or what I did. Neither had I as yet told it to the Jews nor to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest uh, that did the work. Then said I unto them, he said, see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem layeth in waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. He said, come, let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. He said in verse 18, then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me. Hallelujah. Amen. My, I can see Nehemiah now as he is relating to all of them. I was just a cupbearer in my king's palace. Amen. Said, but my God heard my prayer. Amen. And the king began to hear my request. And Nehemiah began to lay it out before him. Amen. How did God begin to make a way for him? Amen. Now Nehemiah standing in the middle of Jerusalem. Thank God. And he's speaking to all of them that's going to help build the wall. He's speaking to all of them that's going to help repair the city. But he gave, amen, them good. Amen, my Lord, a good message. He began to tell them, amen, God has brought me from this point in the king's palace all the way to where I'm standing here today and every man that was
was there that was hearing the message of Nehemiah did not have a doubt in their mind that it was God Almighty amen, that brought him from that long distance where he was to the place where he is standing. My Lord, I feel like preaching just a moment here this morning. Thank God we need to realize this morning just how far we've came. Amen. Where we come from, where we're standing at now, what God's done for us, how far God's brought us. I didn't get here by myself. You didn't get where you are by yourself. But the hand of God has been upon your life. The devil wants to smooth, he wants to smother you out. The devil wants to discourage you. The devil don't want you to go on with the Lord's work. But we need to be reminded it was God that brought us from yonder to where we are right now. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. They had a great task at hand. I'm telling you, this was not no small job. This was going to be a great undertaking. Amen, to build again the walls of Jerusalem and restore that city that was laying in waste. Nehemiah said, my, amen, these people need to have a made up mind. These people need to be fully persuaded. These people need to be of a good courage. We'll never get the job done unless their faith, amen, brothers, build up in God. And Nehemiah told them how the hand of God had been upon his life. You know what he was doing? He was building up their faith. He was building up their courage. They had a great job to be done. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hear me this morning. Amen. I believe it was. Amen. One of the, I believe it was Elijah. Was it Elijah that was sitting by the brook? Thank God. Hallelujah. And the, the angel of the Lord said to him, yeah. Amen, said, eat. Praise God. Said, the journey's too great for you. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Amen. Uh, I don't even know if the man of God realized what was ahead of him. But God did. Yeah. And God said, it's too great for you unless you eat. Yeah. Amen. Nehemiah said, we can't never get it done unless we get on the same page with unity, with a made up mind, with strength and courage. If we don't start out with that, brother, we'll never finish the task that God's got for us. Hallelujah. Come on. Praise God. I want to tell you something. Amen. God's been dealing with me, and I mentioned to you about it earlier. Amen. How it seemed like the enemy has come against us and attacked us. He wants us to have a negative spirit. I just got to thinking just this past week, amen, our president has come down with the COVID, praise God, and my brother down in Florida, my brother Jack has now got the COVID, and I've been hearing different ones that's coming down with, I believe I read the newspaper article this week in the Robinsonian, it said they've had five deaths in our county because of COVID, highest it's been since I don't know when. Praise God in this saying, it seemed like the enemies kind of wanted us to get a little bit negative. How in the world are we going to make it through it? God's been dealing with me. Hey, man, we'll never get through it if we're negative. We'll never get through it if we don't come up. Hey, man, and ask God to give us courage, give us faith, help us to look back to God. Hey, Amen. Uh, I can see Nehemiah now. Hey, man, as he's sitting on his beast and he's looking at the old sepulchers of his father. Hey, man, he's looking at the walls that they've been torn down. The city's laying in waste and ruins. I can see Nehemiah now, brother. Hey, man, with tears running down his eyes, sitting on this beast, looking at the devastation. Uh, God, help me preach right here. Hey, man, of Jerusalem. Thank God there's a great work that's got to be done. Hey, man, but Nehemiah, the hand of the Lord was upon his life. Thank God. And he began to tell him, we got to go to work. There's a work that needs to be done. I want to read to you just exactly what he said. Hey, man, and what come upon these people? Listen now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, I went to the gate of the fountain of the king's pool. There was neither place for the beast. 
I went, amen, up by night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back, entered into the gate of the valley. So I returned. The rulers knew it not. He went old. He said, I said unto them, ye see the distress that we are in. Can I preach to us just a moment here this morning? Can I ask you the same question Nehemiah is asking them? Amen. Can you see the distress that we have been in? Come on. Amen. You see the distress that we are in. How Jerusalem layeth waste. The gates thereof are burned with fire. He said, come. Let us build up the wall of Jerusalem. That there be no more a reproach. Hallelujah. Oh, and it said, then I told them that the hand of my God was upon me and also the words of the king which he had spoken unto me. And they said, listen, they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nehemiah, I believe, my Lord, I feel like preaching a minute. Hey, but I believe Nehemiah, hey, but he probably just laid the letter out. Hey, but in front of them, said, look at it. It's got the king's seal on it. Hey, but the king has put his approval on it. Oh, look at all the soldiers and the captives hey, man, that the king has brought down here with us. Oh, the hand of the Lord has been with me. God showed us favor. Hey, man, it filled up the heart of those men. And they said, let us go to work at once. They strengthened their hand. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I felt like the Lord got to dealing with me to tell us this morning, we got to use what we got. Hallelujah. Use what we got. Amen. And watch God provide what we don't have. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Sam Ballot and Tobiah, my, they heard of it. They laughed us to scorn. They despised us and said, what is this thing that you do? Ye rebel against the king. Listen now. They answered in them and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we his servants will arise and we will build. Oh, listen. said, but listen, I like this. This is a boldness that the men of God got. They said, looked at Sam Ballot and Tobiah, the enemy. They said, but ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Praise God. Amen. Just go ahead with all the negative you got. Go ahead, amen, and try to hinder all you want to. Thank God, but God is with us. And God's going to help us. And you've got no portion. You've got no right. You've got no memorial. My God from heaven, I want to tell the devil today, this church is built on a rock. The rock Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Of the church of God will arise and go forward for God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, amen, brother. We need some boldness. The devil's breathed out threatenings against us. The devil's accused us. The devil's tried to stop us. But we need to square our shoulder back. And we need to have a message. And let the devil know you've got no right, no portion, nor memorial. This is a hand of God. And God's going to bring us out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My Lord, my Lord. Praise God. I want to just say to us today, the church is not going under. Help me, Holy Ghost. It's going through. Come on. Oh, God, help us. Amen. Listen to me. I've got to preach to you just a minute. Amen. Everybody's not for us. Everybody's not with us. 
There's some that are among us that are not with us. There are some among us. Amen, brother. They're not for us. Amen. I appreciate all the words that were said about your pastor this morning. I thank God for it. And I believe every word that you said. Amen. That I'm not so foolish enough to stick my hand in the my head in the sand and realize that there's not a devil. Amen, brother. He's lurking right out yonder. He don't like the work of God. He don't want to see the work of God go forward. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Everybody among us is not with us. But I've got a message for you this morning. If you're on the other side of the fence, if you're in the enemy's camp, amen, brother, you don't want to see the church blessed. You don't want to see the church go on. Listen to me real good. You're in for a big surprise. Hallelujah. Thank God for many years now. Satan's tried to stop us. But the church of Jesus is still alive. I caught from heaven like a mighty army. We keep marching onward. God is for us, brother. God's going to bring us through it. Amen. Hallelujah. You're either with us or are you against us. I said you're either with us or are you against us. You're either on board or you're not on board. Thank God for heaven. You can't straddle the fence. One foot over yonder and one foot over there. You're either with us or you're not with us. Come on. Amen. Nehemiah said, I won't never get the job done unless they're working together. Preach on, preacher. Hallelujah. Amen. Nehemiah knew. Thank God. Unless these men strengthened their hand and had courage and stood shoulder to shoulder, kept the unity. Glory to God. I'm going to read to you. I probably can read it to you right here. Amen. Sam Ballot and Tobiah, they tried to work against Nehemiah's laborers and workers behind Nehemiah's back. They tried to disharden Amen, those men that were laying the bricks in the wall. Help me, Holy Ghost. Praise God. Amen, while Nehemiah was doing everything he could, amen, to get this job complete. Listen, he had a time frame. He done told his boss. He done told his king. Amen, this work will be completed, and I'll be back at your house to serve you, king, at a certain date and a certain time. Amen, he didn't have time to waste. He didn't have time to get distracted. He had to get the job done. Come on, church. Praise God. And that old devil, amen, while Nehemiah was trying to keep them strengthened, while he was trying to give them courage, he was preaching to them about the hand of God. He was trying to tell them, amen, the Lord's for us. Keep pressing your way on. Keep working. God's going to help us. Amen. While he was trying to do that, amen, there was an old Sam Ballad and Tobiah. Amen. While every time Nehemiah had his back turned, Amen. They were down there trying to discourage the work of God from going forward. Oh, hear me today. Amen. The devil don't never try to stop. He don't never quit, brother. He's going to do his best to hinder the work of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Nehemiah heard from the Lord. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Woodrow Cooper told me this morning, hallelujah. He said, I'm amazed, Brother Andrew. He said, how many people through the years has come to Mount Zion Church and stood up and said these very words, God told me to come here to this church. God sent me to be a part of this church. This is where God wants me to be. And it ain't too long after they done stood up and said that. They done flew the coop. Come on. Come on. 
help me Holy Ghost hallelujah and you know what they never come to the preacher they never said anything to the preacher I looked around and they were gone come on I'm going to tell you what disheartens a lot of people a lot of time let me preach to you just a minute it's the words of naysayers those that are on the sideline Hear me, they've always got something negative to say. Glory to God, I was on my way to preach just this week, amen, in Danville, Virginia. And on my way to preach there, I got a phone call from somebody from out of state. And they said, Brother Andrew, said, I heard so-and-so about you. Praise God. He said, I told them when I heard it, I did not believe it. I said, brother, I said, it ain't true. I said, brother, what you heard is not true. Hey, but I laid it down to him just like it was. He said, I'm going to go right back to him, brother Andrew, and I'm going to tell him what you said. I didn't believe it when I heard it. Hey, but, but do you know what? How many of them would believe it when they heard it? Come on, amen. Some folks are not persuaded that God is in the midst of us and God's hand is upon us. All the time that Nehemiah was trying to tell them what God had done, the devil was over yonder trying to put doubt and confusion in their mind. God help me today. I wish I could preach to sinners and see our altars filled. But I'm telling you, I got a full-time job of telling the people of God don't listen to the devil. Don't tune your ear in to the devil. He's out to defeat us. He's out to get us disheartened. He don't want us to be our best for God. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, I could preach two hours what I feel like preaching this morning. Oh, glory. Amen. I can see Sam Ballot and Tobiah now. Whew. Them walls went up 10 more feet today. Glory to God. I can see them now. Hey, Amen. Woke up the next morning. Whew. Them walls went up 10 more feet overnight. My God. They're not just working in the day. They're working at night. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, Amen. We got to do something to stop them. Hey, Amen. They're moving on toward the finish line. We got to do something to hinder them. Hey, Amen. But night and day, Brother Ray, they kept their hand to the pile. They kept on a working, doing the will of God. And the walls began to keep going up. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel like shouting just a little bit here this morning. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Amen, hallelujah. Hey, oh, to God, Sam Ballot told by, they laughed, despised us. Amen. And goes on and, hey, but it tells about what Sam Ballot and Tobias said. Amen. What, listen now, this is their intimidation. And this is their degrading of who these men of God were. They said, Amen. What do these feeble Jews? Amen. Will they fortify themselves? Hallelujah. Help me preach, Holy Ghost. I guess somebody's going to get mad with me this morning. This Democrat party can't stand the church people. Amen, Brother Smith. Come on, liberals. You know who's standing right in their way? The church. The people that stands for holiness and stands for righteousness. Glory to God. Amen. They do their best. I feel God. Amen. They do their best to put laws on the book against the church and against that holy Bible. They can't stand it. They hate it. They don't like it. Thank God, brother. But who would have ever thought that with all of the bombardment from the enemy's camp that God would have fixed it to where we could have got three, not 
one, not two, but three. Amen. Conservative. Thank God Supreme Court Justice that just overthrowed Roe versus Wade. It could have been nobody else but the hand of my God. Help me, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Lord. We need to see what God's are doing. Amen. Oh, amen, I know Trump's not saved. Amen, I know, thank God, he's got faults and failures. But you know what I look at Trump like? Amen, he's not God, he's not Jesus. Thank God, but you know what he was? He was a vessel. Thank God, a vessel that God worked through. Amen, brother, that get his will accomplished. You hear me, old devil? It ain't over till it's over. I feel the Holy Ghost. I said it ain't over till it's over. God's got the last word. Lord, amen. Hallelujah. Thank God it looked like America. It's going to hell in a handbasket. But God said not till I see. God said not till it's over. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. We're using what we got. Hallelujah. It looked mighty bleak looking to me. It looked like conservatism was almost fading out in our nation and in our country. Worried. We were worried. Glory to God. But guess who's on the worry end of the stick today? They don't like it because they can't abort them kid children and kill them children. But guess what, sister? Those appointments is lifetime appointments. And old wicked Hillary Clinton herself, I heard her so upset. She said this has been overturned and with these three Supreme Court justices said it's going to be this way probably for decades and years and years to come. Thank God when God puts his hand in it, when God begins to turn the table, when God begins to work, brother, the devil can't do nothing about it, amen. It was out of my control. All I done was went to the poll and voted. That's all you done. Hey man, I just used what I had and I watched God take what I didn't have and put it where it needed to be, amen. On. I don't want to preach too long this morning. Amen. Them old feeble, them feeble Jews. Look at them. Yeah, you look at them real good, Sam Ballard and Tobiah. You can call them whatever you want to call them. But all the time you're talking, the walls are going up. Foot by foot by foot. Glory to God. Amen. This church, hear me, for several years has been under the gun. I know what I'm talking about. The devil's accused us of all kinds of things. He'd like to smear our name and put us down. Glory to God. Hear me. God forbid that you would be a part of the devil's smear campaign. We need some people that will stand up and defend amen, the church of the living God. Come on. Hallelujah. You feeble Jews, what are you doing? I'll tell you what. Just keep on watching. Hey, Amen. I prayed about it. I got upset when I heard the devil's lies. And you know what God told me? He said, you live it. You live down the devil's lie. Hey, Amen. It might take a while. Hey, Amen. The devil's telling lies. But you live it down. Hey, Amen. Let the years roll on. And let them see. Brother Smith ain't changed. I'm still the same man. I'm preaching out of the same old book, brother. Hallelujah. Just live down the devil's life. Amen. Thank God. I don't believe Nehemiah had, I don't believe he had time to respond to the devil every time the devil said something. Come on. Hey, man, listen. Using what you got, what do these feeble Jews, will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end of a day in a day? I like this last part. 
will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which is burned. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I said Nehemiah didn't have the material. Nehemiah didn't have the skills. Nehemiah didn't have all of the, amen, the supplies that he needed. Thank God, but I can see them now as they're digging down in the ash piles and in the rubbish, and they're pulling those stones out of that heat pile. You know what they were doing? They were using what they had. Glory to God. Amen. Holy Ghost, help me. Amen. My Lord. Amen. These old stones might be in an ash pile. These old stones might be in a heap. But Nehemiah said they was one time on a wall. They were one time working. They were one time securing Jerusalem. Said if they could do it one time, they can do it again. It's worth digging down in the heaps of the rubble. they been pulling out them old stones. Thank God put them back on that wall. Hallelujah. Use what you got, saints of God. Hey, man, it might look like a heap pile. Hey, man, it might not look like we got much left. I was a preacher in that camp meeting this past week in Danville, Virginia. Thank God and one of the brothers come to me. He said, Brother Andrew, it's been so discouraging and so disheartened. He said, on Sunday nights, we might have five people in the church. Thank God. But I told him, I said, you stay faithful to God. Hey, but stay in there, my friend. Don't you let the devil get you down and out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I've been asking God to help me to stay positive. Hey, but brother, if I got to go to the heat pile and dig out of that rubbish, get down in the ashes. Hey, but whatever it takes, oh God. Hey, but brother, help me. Hey, but brother, to do what I need to do for God. Glory to God. Amen. I'm coming to a close. Amen. Down and sort of discouraged. Some, what I've been seeing. Amen. But now I'm going to tell you, God's been showing me some positive things. Glory to God. Amen. Sister, my neighbor next door to me come to my fence the other day. Preacher, I go to the big Baptist church right across the street from the UNC Pembroke. Most of you know Berea. Praise God. And, uh, you know, that's supposed to be the largest, biggest church in Pembroke. And this man's been going there for years, and he told me, he said, I've never seen anything like it. He said, this past Sunday, we might have had 80 people in our service. And I looked at him, I said, my Lord, I said, my church out in the country had 118, 119 last Sunday. Brother Charles Bell said to me, he said, Brother Andrew, you have not one reason to hang your head. You need to lift up your head. God is working. God is touching. God is blessed. The devil wants us to feel defeated. But in the name of Jesus, we are more than conquerors. Stand with me all over the house. Could somebody lift up your hand tonight, today, and say, we are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. By faith this morning, I'm going to stand flat-footed. I'm going to let the devil know this morning by faith. I said by faith, sister, by faith. Thank God we're going to see greater things. By faith, we're going to see the hand of God work. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Why can you say that, Brother Smith? Because the hand of God, the hand of God is revealed. God has been on us. God has touched us. Can I say this right here this morning, Brother Eric? Brother Eric told me the other night, we was walking out here in the dark. He told me, he said, Brother Andrew, you know when you was talking about building that new church? I said, yeah, brother. He said, I was excited, really excited about seeing a new church. Been a little disappointed that the plans has been called off. Brother Eric, God's been talking to me. By faith this morning, I believe God is able to help us 
and we can see that new church. Amen. God is able. Praise God. Sometimes we see the right now, the here and now. I was looking at Brother Woodrow this morning. We were sitting over there in our chair. I said, Brother Woody, I see him standing out in the foyer looking for a place to sit. I said, I believe in God is going to fill our church and move for us. Amen. Do you believe that with me this morning? You can say what you want to. The devil's tried to shut us down. The devil's tried his best to disharden us. Amen. But I'm standing my ground this morning letting the devil know this belongs to God. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm going to ask you this morning to do like Nehemiah done. Nehemiah laid it out before him. He said, can you see from the beginning to now that God's been in it? God's hand's been in it. He let them make up their own mind. Every one of them agreed. There's no doubt God's been in the midst of what Nehemiah's doing. I feel like tonight, today, as we open up this altar, I want you to take time this morning. God, open up my eyes. Let me see the hand of God and what you're doing. Hallelujah. It's no time for us to become a naysayer or to become negative. We're serving a God this morning that's more than able to do what needs to be done. I preach to you all I've got this morning. The altar's open for everyone that'll come. Amen. Let us find us a place. God, give us courage. Give us strength. 